What's going on guys? Jerry Neutron here and I'm back with another video and I know what you're probably thinking. Oh no, why do you have that SSD? You heard about the NAND switch, right? Well, these things were on sale for $55 on new eggs, so I decided to take a chance on one. A part of me was thinking, hey, maybe they changed the manufacturing process back to the way it was before, but none of these things will sell due to the negative press, so maybe I'll get a decent drive for a steal. So I picked one up to install and test, and I'll get into that in a moment, but first let me go over the stats of this SSD. Okay, so for those unaware, this is the Kingston SSD Now V300. This is a 120 gigabyte model, as you can see, and it's a 2.5 inch drive. According to Kingston, it has a custom LSI Sandforce controller, 450 megabytes sequential read-write speeds, more on that later. And I'm not sure about the NAND. It's likely an asynchronous NAND, but I'm actually getting different performance than some of the big review websites, which claim there is a Micron 20 nanometer NAND on board. So it's possible Kingston changed their manufacturing process again. Uh, I'm not really sure, but uh, anyway, it's time to install this baby in my rig. Okay, so since I just picked up the bare drive, it did not come with any adapter brackets or cables, so I had to figure that part out on my own. Now luckily, my case has a spot for an SSD right on the bottom, so it was a pretty simple install. I just had to dig around for cables and screws. And once it was in there, I connected my cables and I tried to clean them up a bit, and off I went. Uh, at this point, I am really wishing I had a case with some cable management, as it is looking a little cramped, but uh, not much I can do. So now that I've got the drive installed, it's time for some benchmarks. So I ran a clean install of Windows 8.1 on this drive, and as soon as it was done, I fired up the AS SSD benchmark and ran the test a few times. And all the results were pretty similar within 3 to 4 megabytes of each other. In this particular test, I hit around 437 and 158 megabytes per second sequential read-write speeds and 4K speeds of 15 and 59 megabytes per second read and write. So as you can see, I don't hit the Kingston advertised 450 read-write speeds, which I already knew wasn't going to happen, but what you do get is entry-level SSD performance at a low price. So based on this benchmark, SSD performance is pretty similar to a Crucial uh, MX100 and other SSDs in that bracket. And as long as you're aware of this going in, the performance isn't too disappointing. So after all this, what are my thoughts on this SSD? Well, I think if I was buying an SSD for the first time, number one, I would skip entry-level SSDs entirely. Uh, there are performance increases to be had with going to an SSD, but honestly, I could live without it. Uh, it's not a night and day difference in my opinion, at least not on the entry level side. Uh, I certainly wouldn't recommend cutting performance on the CPU or GPU in just to fit an SSD into your budget. So if you're going to get one, you may as well make it worth it and at least go for a mid-range or enthusiast grade SSD. Uh, also, I'd recommend going with a 256GB model or greater as the 120 gig SSDs may leave you a little bit cramped for space a year from now. Also, some SSDs increase in performance as they go up in size. So, that's pretty much all I have to say about that. Uh, thanks for watching, guys. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. And until next time, see ya.